Hey guys, it's Friday morning. Welcome. Thanks for joining in. Uh, kind of last minute, just deciding to make these Monday through Friday uh, now instead of just Monday through Thursday. So you can look forward to that for the next few weeks at least. Um, the last uh, few days have been really like self-reflective and um, we're kind of looking, we're looking inward and um, that was kind of the point is to be, um, to, to have it be kind of personal to us and to be able to think through and pray about things um, that are, that are personal to us. And um, I want to help us be able to learn how to spend more time um, without being distracted and being quiet and being able to pray um, and listen and in have a relationship, an actual relationship with God. And, um, but so much of, um, there's so much going on in the world and God cares about the world a lot. Uh, he doesn't only want us to sit in our room quietly praying. He wants us to care about the world as he does um, and to, to do something about it. And so Fridays, are, we are going to, Fridays are going to be a look outward and um, they're not going to be focused on us. They're going to be us looking into the world, into our community or our school or the world, the country, whatever, um, whatever kind of floats your boat per se. Um, and it's going to be learning, learning to care about it in the way that God does. And so first thing I'm going to do is we're just going to go through a little bit of scripture um, to kind of get us thinking about the ways that God cares about what's actually going on in the world and not just the spiritual life. Um, but God actually um, seems to think that everything is spiritual when you read um, the Bible um, from that lens. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen with you. And um, we're going to start in Isaiah. And so Isaiah starts off hot. And God is kind of scolding them a little bit. Um, but here, listen to what Isaiah has to say, or what God has to say through Isaiah. Um, in chapter 1, verse 13. This is the message version, so it's going to seem a little bit more modern. Monthly conferences, weekly Sabbaths, special meetings, 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 meetings. I can't stand one more. Meetings for this, meetings for that. I hate them. You've worn me out. I'm sick of your religion, religion, religion. Well, you go right on sinning. When you put on your next prayer performance, I'll be looking the other way. No matter how long or loud or often you pray, I'll not be listening. And you know why? Because you've been tearing people to pieces and your hands are bloody. Go home and wash up, clean up your act, sweep your lives clean of your evil doings so I don't have to look at them any longer. Say no to wrong, learn to do good. Here's the good, work for justice, help the down and out. Stand up for the homeless and go to bat for the defenseless. God obviously cares a lot about how we treat each other. And the people at this time were so focused on all the religious stuff that they missed out on the fact that they were wronging people left and right. And they were holding down people who were less fortunate. And God is calling us and the people that he's speaking to here, the Israelites, to work for justice, that all people might have an opportunity to thrive in the life that God has for us. God wants the world and everything in it to be made right. And when he says, Jesus says in the Gospels that the kingdom of God is here, the kingdom of God is, is um, the idea that God would rule over the world and that his ways would overtake the ways that humans have taken the world. And so where there is loneliness and where there's death and hunger, there would be community and there'd be life and there'd be people who are fed and safe and secure. And God's heart goes out for that. And, but all over our world, we see brokenness everywhere. There's more slaves in our world than have ever been in history. 
the coronavirus is wrecking families, finance, finances, health. Our society seems to be coming apart. There's millions of people, millions and millions of people who don't have enough food or clean water to make it through on a daily basis. There's all sorts of problems in the world that God cares deeply about. And in the book of Revelation, the very end of the Bible, God um, shows John, who's the writer of Revelation, he's a, a vision. And in the, the vision, John gets to see a glimpse of what it's going to be like in the new creation when the world, um, this world comes to an end and it's remade and God is now with us. And we're going to read from that to get a glimpse of what the world made right looks like. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. This is an incredible vision of what life fully with God will look like. There will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. And I might add hunger, violence, things that cause sorrow, crying, pain. It's incredible. And God actually empowers us to, in little bits and pieces, take part in that now. To slow violence. To bring someone a friend who's lonely, to feed people who are hungry, to give people a job who need money. All of these things are practical ways that God cares about us, and they're not totally separate from our spiritual life, that everything in this world is spiritual because God created it and loves it and wants the best for it. And so what we're going to do is the exercise that I'm going to have for you guys today, I didn't say this, but I usually do, that you're going to need a journal or something to write with and something to write on. Um, and you're, I'm going to give you some time. And I want you to just list off as many things as you can think of that are not right in the world. This might hurt a little bit. It might be a little overwhelming. Um, you're, you might feel like you have no clue where to start. But that is okay. I'm going to get to that. But I want you to list off as many wrong things in the world that you can think of. Things like hunger, lack of plumbing, latrine systems, homelessness, drug abuse. All, I mean, there's, you can just go on and on. And I want you to think of all these practical ways that people um, struggle to thrive with the life that God gives us. And so I'm going to give you three or four minutes to just think about those things um, and write them down as many as you can. And then we'll jump back in together in three or four minutes.
All right, hold on to that. We're gonna use we're gonna use that list that you made here in just a second. The reason why uh, I chose for us to do this on Friday and to look out into the world on Fridays is because I've come to find that it is when I am most connected to God myself that I'm best able to serve. And when we just serve and serve and serve and we don't stop and, and stay in touch with God ourselves, we often get tired and weary quicker. And so I have us at the beginning of the week starting and doing more personal reflection um, to kind of symbolize um, almost like the airplane thing where you put your own oxygen mask on first and then you put the, the one on to the person next to you. And that's kind of why I chose the end of the week for looking outward into the world. Um, and we're gonna get back to some of our tracking through Matthew uh, on Monday. But here's what I want you to do with that list now. I'm gonna give you a few more minutes, and actually you can do this on your own, um, on your own time, take as long as you want, because I'm gonna sign off after I send you out here. Um, but take at least, I would say, three or four more minutes. Um, and think about which one of these things that I wrote down breaks my heart the most. Which one of them am I the most passionate about? Maybe it brings up the most emotion or, or anger. Uh, I just feel the most strongly towards this thing that I wish I could fix this thing. One of the things on your list. Maybe it's drug addiction. Maybe it's homelessness. Maybe it's global poverty. I, I don't know. But um, listen to what, what God is doing inside of you and how you feel passionately about each different one and choose the one that you're most passionate about. And then I want you to spend two or three minutes at least uh, praying for um, the people who are affected by that issue. You may not know people, maybe you do, um, but pray for the people who are affected by that issue or for the earth if because taking care of this planet um, and the environment is an issue that God cares deeply about too. And so after you pray, uh, I, I, so I want you to identify which one you feel the most passionate about. You can spend some time reflecting and thinking and praying, or you can just, one comes to mind and you're ready to go, but then pray specifically for that. And then I challenge you, on your own time, maybe this weekend, whenever, to do some research and figure out what is the problem with that issue. Figure out what organizations are trying to help. What are the, the roadblocks? Um, has the problem gotten worse or better? Um, and how does it affect people? Maybe do a little research. You don't have to, but I think it's helpful. If you, if you really care about something, I think you'll be interested to hear more about it and to find more about it and you have plenty of time on your hands so um, that's all i have for you guys today um, spend some time identifying which thing you're the most passionate about on your list spend some time praying specifically for that and the, the people and the places that are involved and then do some research on your own and figure out more about that issue and um, what's going on with it um, and we'll we'll talk more about these things later i can't tell you to go out and do something about it because you're supposed to stay home so you all are awesome. I'm going to pray for you and then send you off to do those things. God, you desperately want this world to be right again. And I ask that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I pray for each of these folks um, that they would hear from you and, and uh, that their heart would break where your heart breaks. In your name. Amen. All right, y'all. Spend some time doing that, and I will. Uh, I'll talk to you on Monday.